Influence Matters, the show where each week I share tips, tricks, tools, resources, hacks, whatever you want to call them, to help savvy influence builders just like you to strategically and intentionally build and cultivate influence because we know that that's how we organically generate leads for our, mi our business, ministry, cause, brand, whatever it is you're doing in the world. It's all about influence, isn't it? Influence Matters. Today, before we get started, of course, I have to start out by saying thank you to our sponsor, Rosedale Publishing, and they help to create books for entrepreneurs and professional business books specifically. We've done a few other things, but that's where our niche is. But if you haven't checked them out, check out Rosedale Publishing. Thank you for sponsoring this show. And of course, I have to give a shout out to my fine friends over at Tampa Bay Multimedia and WeBeam TV, where we are today, where they truly make this show possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, if you were here last week, you know we did a two-part series. If you weren't, we're going to go over a couple of things just so that you can catch up. But do go back and watch the first episode because some of the things I say today might make more sense to you then. Okay, so let's start out with the same thing we started with last time, which is our question of the week. And we're sticking with the same question because this is a two-parter. And it was from Sam. And Sam wanted to know, more and more, I'm seeing the term co-writer used as a service that someone offers. What is co-writing, and is it different than ghostwriting? What does it really mean? So that was a really great question, Sam. Thank you so much. Last week, we talked about what co-writing was. Really, it is collaborative writing. So I think that I may have come up with the term myself in 2017 when I first started using it. I hadn't seen it anywhere, but now lots of people are using the terminology. Now, whether it means the same thing to them that it means to me, I don't know. But in my business, co-writing is a collaborative writing process. We talked pretty much in depth last week about how that process worked. And then today, we are back for part two, and we're going to talk about the other side of that equation, which is the ghostwriting. So co-writing versus ghostwriting, what's the difference, and which one is right for you? They really are just two different options for writing writing your book. And only you can know which path is going to be better for you. It's all about getting the knowledge, right? Getting the information so you can make a good choice for yourself. Okay, so today we're talking definitely about ghostwriting. And what does that really mean? So what is ghostwriting? So ghostwriting is just the process of someone else writing on your behalf. It's different than co-writing in that you're not actually doing the writing like when you're doing a collaborative writing project. Ghostwriting, somebody else is writing for you. Now, in the industry, you can expect to see prices ranging from, I've seen as low as $1,500 for a book, which I have no clue how that can even be possible, but I've seen it that that inexpensive, and I've seen it up to $100,000, which, you know, most people aren't going to spend that on their book, but if you're a celebrity or, you know, somebody important, somebody really famous, perhaps, then you probably don't care. You could drop that kind of money, but that's not the norm. You can expect for a good ghostwriting service that you're going to drop between ten dollars and $25,000. Now, 
That's important to understand that this is a process that's going to cost you some money, but more importantly, it's going to cost you some time. And we're going to touch on that a little bit more later, but isn't something that's the easy way out. <laughs> I say that because I've had a few people over the years say, can't you just ghostwrite this for me without even really realizing that that's not necessarily the easy way out. All of the beginning work still needs to happen, and it's still a very collaborative process. I know in my company, it's super collaborative. I need to know how, how you use words, your personal prose. I need to know the verbiage that you use on an ongoing basis in your daily business life so that I can capture that, that in the book writing process. Otherwise, how will I make the book sound like you? Super important that the book doesn't sound like the ghostwriter. Now, ghostwriting can be done in a couple of different ways. Um, I'm going to share my method with you today. But you might find some people out there that are just going to say, send me your outline and I'm going to write it off of that. I'll do the research. I'll write the book and then send it to you for approval. Well, that process is can sound appealing, can sound like, oh yeah, that's, that's easy, that's the easy, we'll go with that person over there. The end result might not be something that you're absolutely happy with. You might not end up with a book that you are excited to have your name on. Remember, they're ghostwriting for you, so more than likely their name's not going to show up. It's just going to be yours. So you want to make sure you're getting the right book for the job. Of course, if you follow me, you've heard me say it a hundred times that a book is nothing more than a tool. It is a tool that is a means to an end. What are we going to do with this tool when it's done? You want to make sure you end up with something that you're happy with, that is a good representation of you and what you're trying to say to the world and the message that you're trying to share. So all of that starts at the very beginning when you're considering who is going to either write for you or the process you're going to use to co-write and who you're going to co-write with. Okay, so let's get started talking about the ghostwriting process a little bit. First, I want you to hop on over to LinkedIn because I know that you want to say hello to me at Clara Rose Chat, and I have a LinkedIn for you to share. If you don't have time to write your book, ghostwriting could be right for you, but due diligence when hiring is prudent. Kind of already said it to you a little bit. Just be careful that you're hiring the right person for the job. It's a big job. There are lots of talented people out there. Make sure you find the right ghostwriter for you. Okay, let's hop into ghostwriting. Ghostwriting, how does it even work? You may, if you were here last week, you recognize this. Number one, brainstorm and blueprint. And we're going to talk a bit about that process. If you weren't with us, don't worry. And then number two is the collaborative message. That's a little different than last time. We talked about collaborative writing or co-writing. And then get published. Isn't it interesting that that one stayed the same? And a pro tip for you, of course, most people can write their own book. But some people don't have the time, or indeed, some people don't have the desire to do it themselves. I find that most professionals can write their own book. They have the, the physical ability to sit down and write. What they're lacking is the how-to, right? They know their stuff. If you're a chiropractor, for instance, you know about chiropractic. Right? That's what you do. If you're a realtor, you know real estate. It's what you do. The book writing process is very different from what you do. So you just need to find that professional to help you with the pieces that you don't know and you don't understand. We're going to talk about that process from a ghost writing perspective today. Okay, let's get started on step one. All right, step one was the brainstorm blueprint. Sorry if this is a repeat for some of you, but <laughs> for those that it's not, this is important. A brainstorming blueprint is our proven system for creating a solid 
outline. And a solid outline or book build is foundational for the successful writing of your book. Don't try to write a book without a solid outline, without a solid blueprint to follow. You will find it frustrating and not very effective. <laughs> so if you sit down at your keyboard, which I see this often after people have tried this method, they sit down at their keyboard or tablet if you're an old school person, notebook and paper, and they start writing. I think I have a book in me and I'm gonna get it out. So they start writing. Well, at some point they realize that they have written themselves into a corner or they you know, are talking in circles or they don't know what to say next. Like, okay, I'm six chapters in and I, I think I've said it all. I don't know where to go from here. All of that just indicates that they didn't have a solid book build or brainstorming blueprint, like we like to call it, before they started. That process where we got all of the building blocks of your story or your message out of your head where we can do something with it. Off of your computer, out of all those notebooks, or like one of my clients did, she brought in her purse filled with sticky notes and cards and all sorts of things and just dumped it upside down on our floor and said, well, that's how I did all my other books. <laughs> and they all just fluttered to the floor. It was, she was capturing her thoughts and getting them somewhere, but she just didn't know what to do with them next. So that's what we do in the brainstorm and blueprint process is we get it out of your head or purse <laughs> or tablet, notebook, wherever it's at, and get it out there where we can work on it. And the brainstorm and blueprint process lets us look at the big building blocks of your message the little building blocks that support those big building blocks, and then the stories or anecdotes or you know, quotes or self-quotes. I like to call that the mortar. It's what holds that wall together. It's the sticky stuff that gets the story, gets everything stuck together. Those are important things in building out a story that's gonna make sense and be a cohesive message to your end consumer your reader, people that you want to make a difference in their world with whatever it is that you're trying to teach them or tell them, whatever your message is. That's why I actually call the next step what I call it. It's a collaborative message. Let's move on to step two. Step two is all about, oh, I keep forgetting, dang, I put, keep forgetting the LinkedIn messages. Please hop over to LinkedIn and share this. A book build is such an important part of creating a strong and cohesive manuscript that readers will love. Hop on over and check me out at Clara Rose Chat. Please say hello when you're there. Okay, now we can move on. <laughs> I've done my homework. Collaborative message. Now, if you were here last week, this step was collaborative writing, right? This was you writing out according to the brainstorm blueprint we together created, you writing out each chapter and then sending it over to us to developmentally edit the words that you use, checking it against your, your outline to make sure you're sticking to what you said you wanted to talk about in that particular chapter, right? That makes sense. We want the storyline to move along the way that it's supposed to. It's a little different when we're talking about ghostwriting because someone else is going to write for you. In the collaborative message, it's somebody else is gonna write for you. For instance, probably me, one of the writers over at my team. Ghostwriting is really all about someone else capturing your message and your voice. That's the goal. If you find a ghostwriter that isn't talking about or concerned about capturing your voice, run away. That is not the ghostwriter that you want for your project. That's just somebody who wants to quickly regurgitate something, get it out there, and get paid for it. Remember, your book is a tool, and we want this tool to do something when you're done with it. Super important that we've captured your voice so that it doesn't sound like the ghostwriter when it's done. I have seen ghostwriters in the industry. I would never name names, but I'm just saying that everything that they write sounds like them. It's a different topic. There's a different author on the cover. There's different credit given to who wrote the book, but I can tell by reading it exactly who wrote it because it's just 
put out by the same person that hasn't worked on making sure that it sounds like the author. So the way that we capture at my company, the way that we capture your voice while we're capturing your message, right? The brainstorming blueprint is your message. We're gathering the data for, the great, for that piece, but the next piece is super important. The way that we do it is each chapter gets an interview. So we're going to get on Zoom and we're going to have a minimum of an hour long conversation about chapter one, right? All the stuff that we said was going to be in chapter one, we can't very well write it if I can't hear or we can't hear how you say it, how the story comes out of you. Super important. So that's recorded. That gives us a, pl a way to go back and listen. How did they say that? What words did they use to express themselves? Remember, ultimately, I want you to sit down across the table from somebody, your best friend, your spouse, somebody who knows you well, who reads your book and says, it sounded just like you. I could hear your voice when I read your book. That is the ultimate, ultimate compliment to a ghostwriter, is that it sounded just like the person that it was intended to sound like. Now, a lot of ghostwriters can't share with you what they've written. I personally have a few people that I have done a ghostwriting project for that give me permission to say, oh yeah, I ghost wrote that, so that you can go look at the work. But in general, it's a secret, right? Nobody really wants other people to know that that book that says author and their name, that they didn't really write it, right? It's their story, it's their message, but they don't necessarily want the world to know they didn't actually do the writing of it. And that's what ghostwriting does. It gives them the ability to put a book out there when they either don't feel like they have the skill to make it happen themselves, or they don't have the time, which I find often in really busy professionals, really busy entrepreneurs, they're wanting that shortcut to getting the book done that comes from, in their mind, that comes from somebody else doing the writing for them. Now, as long... That's totally true, as long as you can factor in the fact that every time we do a new chapter, we've got to have that hour-long Zoom conversation that we record where we can get you talking about that particular chapter, right? So we can capture your words and capture your, the phrases that you use. Of course, we're not going to capture the little idiosyncrasies that if you say that constantly, we're not going to capture that because that's not good writing. It still has to be solid writing, but we are going to capture the way that you phrase things so the book actually sounds like you. Then nobody's ever going to question, wow, this doesn't sound like you. Did you even write this book? I don't think you even wrote this book. <laughs> I don't think that you probably care, but if you care about that, you want a ghostwriter who's going to make sure that it sounds like you and not somebody else. Okay. I think being authentic to your book is important enough to talk about it both weeks, but even more important is the publishing process beyond that. Understanding what comes next beyond the ghostwriting piece. Biggest difference, of course, between last week and this week is how the actual writing happened. So last week when we talked about co-writing or collaborative writing, it was we're still doing the calls, right? We're still doing the, the back and forths a bit, but the actual physical writing starts with you, the author. Even if it's rough, it's, it's a beginning point to you writing, and I, most people can pull that off. So if you have a desire to be involved in that piece, absolutely go for, for co-writing with somebody. Get that out of your head, get those words onto paper, get them to a developmental editing person who can help you make it sound the way that it should sound and be cohesive within your story. I think there's a lot of satisfaction in being the writer in the co-writing process. But if that's not for you, and I have people say, Clara, I'm not a writer, I don't want to be a writer, I don't want to write, but I need to have a book. That's totally fine. We can ghostwrite with you. Not ghost right for you, but ghost right with you. And that's going to involve some time getting your story out of your head and then Zoom calls to make sure we're staying on track and staying true to your voice and your message as we build out your book. Okay, I hope I made that really clear about just the difference. It's a subtle difference. 
right? The, the brainstorming blueprint didn't change. That still needs to happen. Whether you're writing or we're writing, that's foundational. Remember, we talked about that being foundational to the successful book. This piece is different. Co-writing versus ghostwriting. That's a decision only you can make. And then finally, the last step that we talked about was publishing. But before we talk about that, we're going to talk about LinkedIn again, my friends. Hop on over there and see me at Claire Rose Chat and share this. A good ghostwriter will be able to capture your voice and your message and not sound like them in your book. Hop on over there and say hello to me. I am looking to build my audience over there and I want you to be a part of it. So I'll see you over at LinkedIn. Okay, now we can talk about publishing. This was step three. Now, last week it was step three as well. Getting published is really about understanding your options. Not every book is great for self-publishing, but many are. So understanding the benefits of both are really important. Understanding the benefits of traditional versus hybrid versus self-publishing. You know, there's a number of companies out there that do a vanity publishing where it doesn't matter what the book is like, it could be rubbish. <laughs> it could make no sense, it could be poorly formatted, it could be ugly with a terrible cover, and they don't care. You, it's, you pay to play. So you pay for the publishing, and they're going to publish whatever it is you put together. Some of them do offer some additional services that you can pay for to help clean it up, but it's not a requirement of those. So that's a true vanity publisher where we're going to publish whatever you want us to publish, and we just don't care. Now, that's not going to be true in the traditional publishing or the hybrid publishing world. Of course, in self-publishing, you're welcome to figure it out for yourself. There's lots of guides and people out there giving advice on that. And it's not rocket science, but there's some things that you need to understand in order to protect yourself. We talked about some of those last week. Your ISBN, for instance. Those are, are simple things that you can do to protect yourself. So the biggest tip that I'm going to give you today that's just a freebie for you if you're going to go down the self-publishing road is formatting matters. Formatting is really important. I open up books all the time where I see terrible formatting and I think, oh, this was self-published and it's painfully obvious. Now, I notice the formatting foo paws and the formatting issues. Not everyone will notice why it looks weird, but most everyone will notice that it looks weird. So just be aware that Publishing something, self-publishing is totally possible. Get someone at a minimum to edit for you. Could be a spouse, could be somebody that you know, and then have somebody format so your formatting looks professional. Your message will lose its value if the professionalism of the tool that you created is not there. Harping on it and harping on it and harping on it, but a book is a tool a tool that you use for some purpose. Make sure it's the best tool that it can be. And those are two things that you can get right, right out of the gate, is good editing and good formatting. Okay. Let us hop over one last time to LinkedIn and shout out to Claire Rose Chat. Tell me who you are. And, and say this, just because you can self-publish doesn't mean you should. Understand your options before you decide. There's that, it's that old adage, just because you can doesn't mean you should. There's some benefits to it. There's also some downside to it. And people often say, oh, I'm just going to start with an e-book, and then later we'll, we'll, we'll do the other book, and then make some big mistakes, locking them into something that they're later that they can't get out of. So just get some education, my friend, before you get started. Okay. So now it's time to recap. Before we run out of time totally today, let's do a quick recap. Ghostwriting, how does it work? Much like your co-writing we talked about last week, you have to start with the brainstorm and blueprint process. We have to get all of that information out of your head, off of your computer, out of your purse, off your tablet, wherever it lives, get it out there where we can do something with it. And Put some sort of roadmap together, a blueprint to follow for a cohesive message. Step one always is brainstorm and blueprint. That's the planning, my friends. And then two is the collaborative message. 
Different from the collaborative writing of the co-writing, ghost writing is someone else doing the heavy lifting or the writing for you. It doesn't mean that you're not involved because it is your message after all. And you really are the person with the knowledge. The other person is just going to help you put it into a written format. It sounds like the easy road out, the easy way out perhaps, but I promise you, ghostwriting can take just as much time because of the other side of that process, getting it out of your head in a way that makes sense in a book. I can't very well write, or any ghostwriter can't very well write a book if we don't know how you would actually say it because we want to capture your message and your voice. And then, of course, finally, publishing. Publishing, publishing, publishing is the ultimate goal. Anytime someone says, I've always run a, wanted to write a book, or I've written a book, or I'm writing a book, the end result that they're after is publishing. So understand the difference between vanity publishing and self-publishing, hybrid publishing, and even traditional publishing, which is still available if you want to go down that road. As a matter of fact, in the process of me working with my clients, we always talk about what are your options for publishing. If we write your book together, but you really want to traditionally publish, then we're going to talk about how you're going to get an agent, you know, query letters, trying to get an agent and then trying to get a publishing house or finding a publishing house that will accept direct submissions and you don't have to have an agent. All that stuff's important and we need to talk about that in the beginning. But deciding where you're headed is always important first. Okay, we're running out of time, but I have to tell you about one last thing really quickly. So before we go, it's all about knowledge, co-writing, and ghostwriting are similar processes. The workload is just distributed differently. So learn everything you can about the options for your journey before you start and then get started. Now, I have a challenge coming up. If you are ready to write your book, either through the co-writing process or with a ghostwriter, here's the stuff that you need to know first. Join me for the three-day challenge, Everything Matters. It's the front matter and the back matter and the publishing matters, all the pieces that you need to know about writing your book. And you can sign up today over at clararose.com forward slash author matters. And I can see you next month as part of the three-day challenge. I look forward to having you there. Everything you need to know. Until next week, though, have a great week. Thank <laughs> you.